Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to episode 52 in my second Let's Play series for Anno 1800. In the last episode, we worked on supplying souvenirs to the tourists here on Swords, a monumental task. It took a combination of multiple theatres to wrangle all the goods together, but we're now finally matching the consumption to the production of souvenirs. But there is still a little bit of work to be done with regards to trade routes, and of course we're working on the ongoing effort to overhaul and beautify the world one island at a time. Now, I haven't played this game in over a week. I'm delighted to be back in the hot seat, as it were. But I thought I would take the time here at the beginning of the episode to actually explain where I've been, explain what's going on. So I thought I would move up to the Arctic, where we've got a little bit calmer and cooler atmosphere. We'd take a look at the Huskies, because I have a story about my dog, Jerry. Now, people who follow me on social media and maybe in Discord might know already what's been going on, but I thought it would be, I debated whether or not I should talk about this at all, but um, I thought it was, I don't know, I just, I just felt the need to talk about it, I guess. I'm going to leave a timestamp in the description though, if you don't want to hear a personal story uh, and you just want to get straight to the gameplay, I totally understand. Should be a timestamp available to just skip ahead a little bit. This hopefully won't be um, too long. So. For those who don't know, I have a dog named Jerry. He's a small little uh, Bichon Freeze, a little cute white teddy bear of a dog. And I've had him for 14 and a half years. Now for the first 10 years of his life, I lived in Ireland with him. And now I live in England and he still lives in Ireland. He stays with my brother and my parents. Now my parents are off in Spain on a holiday. They're kind of retired and they spend a lot of time out there. So my dad calls me uh, earlier in the week, right after I'd actually gotten done recording the previous episode, and right after I had just announced that I'd be doing a Frostpunk series and changing the kind of schedule for this series. And my dad calls me and says, Jerry's not doing very well. He's got arthritis in his legs, and he can't really stand anymore, and he can't really walk, and he's, he's in pain. And it's all happened very suddenly. You know, they said that over the course of 48 hours, he has just developed a pain. And he, you know, it's, his health has rapidly deteriorated. And obviously this is extremely emotionally distressing for me. Um, on a side note, I'm very fortunate in many ways that no one really in my family, bar maybe one or two people when I was much, much younger, have died. And I'm nearly 30. Um, so I'm, I haven't really had to deal with um, a family member dying or and a pet or anything like that so it's quite distressing and um, given the situation with COVID I haven't seen my dog for a year and a half freak normally when he's back in Ireland I would go home every two months for a weekend basically to hang out with him uh, obviously side side note is nice to see my parents and everything and my brother but really uh, I was booking the flight for Jerry I'm not gonna lie because um, I miss him so much and unfortunately, just when I moved over here, I just didn't have an apartment that allowed pets, and it was the only place I could get at the time, because it was a first-time renter, and it's just like this whole thing. So, ultimately, I let my brother take care of him, and he grew quite attached to my brother, obviously, and then he became a bit older, and it just seemed like it didn't make sense to uproot him and bring him to England to live in some cramped apartment, when he could be living with a nice big garden back where he is. So, I get this call from my dad, and... Uh, it's obviously very upsetting, and uh, it's a Tuesday, and I'm told that he's going to go to the vet on a Thursday. So I didn't have much time, and because of COVID, you have to book a PCR test to fly to Ireland, or at least last week you did. And uh, you have to have a negative test for a few hours, and then you can go. Anyways, I get the test, I book the flight, I drop everything... And uh, I luckily come up negative, and I'm able to get the flight in the early hours of Thursday morning, a few hours before he's supposed to go to uh, go to the vet. And my brother picks me up in, the, in his car, and Jerry's in the back of it, wrapped in a blanket, not looking good, not looking how I remember, you know, even just a year or so before. Night and day difference. He's clearly very weak. He wasn't eating right anymore, you know, he, he, he's in a bit too much pain to really want to eat just in the last few days. Uh, same with drinking, and it's obviously very hot as well, and he's wrapped to kind of cover him a bit uh, from the sun. Um, and, uh, yeah, so he just he just wasn't doing too good, obviously, right? But, and, oh, yeah, I meant to say he had an eye infection, so he couldn't even really open his eyes. But he recognized me straight away, and he got very um, excited in his, 
in his uh, own way. You know, he, he wasn't able to really move about too much, but you could tell. And I was a little unsure at first, but he definitely did recognize me because we brought him back home. And then as he kind of fumbled his way in the door and as we, as we carried him in, he was trying to go down to my bedroom. <laughs> so it had been over a year and he obviously knew, he did know who I was, which was very nice. And uh, he kind of whimpered and cried a little as, uh, as uh, I started holding him. So I feel like he kind of understood to some extent I was there to comfort him. Anyways, hours go by and we have to take him to the vet. And I've, we kind of make our peace with it, you know, like, okay, it seems very likely that he's, we're probably going to have to put him down to prevent him being in any pain. And he, he can kind of stand a little bit, you know, it would kind of walk a little bit, but he's clearly not having a good time. Anyways, we take him to the vet and uh, we're kind of discussing options. My brother is pretty emotional. I mean, I was as well, but my brother... Couldn't really take in what the vet was saying, so I kind of did the talking and the vet basically mentioned that you could try give him an injection, this new injection that specifically blocks pain for arthritis. And he said he'd never given it to a dog before, it's kind of brand new, at least this is what he was saying. But he's heard great things, there's obviously been trials and everything. What have you got to lose, kind of thing. So I thought, yeah, sure. And we got some other medication for him, so this injection would take a couple days to really take effect. And uh, <clears throat> also, we got him some med medication for his eyes, just just some drops to clear up kind of infections. And uh, what else? Just, you know, painkillers and then anti-inflammatories and stuff. A lot of stuff, you know, and, and we were kind of even questioning, is it right to give him all this stuff? What's his life really going to be like? Is it, you know, is his quality of life going to be good? Is, and we kind of talked about it and we said, as long as he can enjoy food, enjoy company, and still go out for a walk, it's worth living. Because um, we didn't want to be selfish and just keep him going for us. Um, so anyway, we gave him this injection and we said we wait a couple days. I didn't book a return flight. I was just there to stay for as long as it needed to be. And... Um, to our surprise, within a couple days, he started walking again. He ate big full meals. He's obviously really old. I don't know if I mentioned he's 14 and a half. So he's very old and he's partially blind and partially deaf. Not not too bad. He'll be able to recognize you and stuff, but sometimes he might be bumping into things. So it didn't seem like, you know, it, it wasn't going to be like this massive cure, but he was up and at it again. He was walking around and a couple days even further in then, he started like trotting up and down the garden and he started trying to climb on chairs and stuff again. You know, it's, I know it sounds very basic, but he, from the state he was in, he was actually standing on his back legs now rather than not even being able to stand up. So he had this amazing transformation in those few days and then his eyes cleared up and I really got to kind of bond with him again. So for me personally, I wrote this on, on Twitter and social media that, you know, I was feeling like a lot of anger and regret thinking that it had been a year and a half, not uh, just at the situation, I guess, not at anything in particular or, or anything like that, but at the situation that I couldn't have, I didn't know about it. And it was just like the last moment you get to go, you're going to just have to go home and spend literally a couple hours with him and then, you know, likely put him down. So this gave me an extra weekend with my dog where I kind of got to prepare for, prepare for all that and then spend some time with him, you know, let him know that I love him and my brother as well. And we got to like really have a great weekend with him. I brought him out every day. We gave him nice food and he, he's still going now. He's fine. <laughs> so he, he made it. And uh, I have like a little video on my Twitter if people want to see it, if anyone is interested to see it just from how he was to where he ended up. Now, he's still old. This isn't a cure. It's a suppressant of pain. So no doubt in a few more months, things will take a turn and we'll have to, you know, say it will be time to say goodbye at some point. So I'm of no mistake thinking that. I know that that's on the horizon eventually. But I guess what I'm saying is it was amazing to be able to go home and have another weekend with my dog after a year and a half. And uh, it was awesome, you know, in the end. The music is still quite somber and sad, but it, it, sh it should be up upbeat and uplifting now because it was great. And as far as I know right now, he's doing good. You know, he's eating his food again. He's drinking his water. He doesn't seem to be in pain. 
he's gloving belly rubs and as usual and all of the stuff you know dogs do he's, he's great and uh, <laughs> yeah we knew he was fine when he was able to lift his leg and and pee on my brother's car so um, so I just thought I'd, I'd share that you know it's quite a personal thing I guess but um you know there was an outpouring of messages of people telling me about their pets and stuff and you know, it's very, it's a very difficult thing. I really, I'm a big animal lover and I really love my dog. Um, so it was, a, it was a really difficult thing. But I think this has gone a long way to helping me prepare for the future. And at the very least, if I have to go home or if I do miss the chance to be there when, if he has to be put down or if he dies, you know, just naturally. Um, I'm so thankful that I got to have a great week with him where, or weekend where, you know, I wasn't really working. I was just sitting there. With him on my lap pretty much the whole weekend, I think he felt really comforted by that. And I like to think, you know, anthropomorphizing a little bit, but I like to think that he knows that if he is in discomfort, he knows I'll be there. You know, and I definitely will be. You know, if there's any problems, I'll go straight home again. Um, but that's that's basically it. Uh, I don't really know where to go from there, but I thought I would just share it. You know, it's just what happened to me in the last week. It's And like I said, I haven't really had to deal with anything like that before. Um, but yeah, so I guess that's it. Anyways, like I said, little video on my on my Twitter if people want to see. It's actually in my Discord in the announcements as well. It's just I just threw a little video together just to show because how bad he was to how good he became, and I, I didn't want to show him in pain or anything, but just show when he was walking how you can see the difference. Um, so yeah. Anyways, genuinely, I mean it's kind of hard to recover from that, but uh, genuinely now it is really great to be back in Anno. Um, and yeah, I'm sorry that I missed an episode. Obviously, it was very unpredictable. It happened very, very fast. And hopefully, it won't happen again, at least for a very long time, if that's the case. But uh, I'm hoping to, like I said, start up a Frostpunk series. So, Anno 1800 is... I'll mention this at the end again, just in case people did skip the timestamp thing. But Anno 1800 is going to be on Wednesdays and Sundays going forward. And then Frostpunk, The Last Autumn, is going to be on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Sunday. Those are the days of uploads now. It'll be on the banner of my channel as well, in case, in case people need to remember. And if you follow me on Twitter or on Discord, I always post when videos are live, and I post there why they're not, if they're not going to be. Um, I'm just trying to think, is there anything else to mention? I don't think so. I think that's pretty much it. All right, let's try to jump back into the gameplay. So we'll go back to normal speed. And, uh, alright, so if people have skipped ahead and just joined me now, uh, I'll try not to be redundant, but I do just want to mention it really quickly again. Uh, this series is now going to continue on Wednesdays and Sundays. That's the uploads for Anno 1800, and I'm largely going to be doing a lot of redevelopments of islands, so... I think in this episode I'm going to go to Scaries, because of, it's a bit of a shorter episode because of what I was talking about. Um, I'm going to go to Scaries and develop it into a nice little community, as it were. And then maybe in the next one we'll go to something like Malahide. There's, some of these islands actually have to feed off of each other. But we've got a few, I've got bullet points of a few things that we need to get done anyway. So time has been playing in the background. I don't know, did I make a, um, a new ship? I did, great. So something that needs to be done is on our souvenir route. Here we are. So just to catch everyone up, let's just go through it again. From the old world, we have the ship that carries up the, you know, fancy things, I guess, up to swords, right? We're carrying telephones, clay pipes, jam, I guess, uh, shampoo, lemonade, and souvenirs. Things that the scholars or the uh, uh, tourists are going to be using, you know? So we're not producing that. So yeah, so that we're not producing souvenirs here. But we're taking them from here. This is our deposit island, of course. And apologies if my voice is kind of going... I just, I, I don't have a cold or anything, I don't think, but, um, I'm speaking a lot lately, and my voice is just, I'm like, so thirsty, and I'm drinking as much as I can, it's obviously very hot, so, it's just that, that's, that's what's going on there, so apologies if that's happening, or if, uh, I'm sounding a bit raspy, um, anyway, so we have our other ship that's going from Cape Trelawney, from Crown Farms, that's picking up all of these souvenirs, and then dropping them off in Lusk, and then it's picking up cotton and camphor wax, which is what it uses to make them. But as you may see, as you may notice, I'm dropping off 300 souvenirs, and I'm only picking up 150 of the goods that are needed to make them. So that basically means that you can only, excuse me, that would have been a very loud burp. You can only make 150 souvenirs. You know, you'd never be able to match that with the way I've laid out those ships. God, what is going on with my um, burping? Anyway, I'm just going to add another ship to this. 
This isn't the best way to solve this problem. A separate route would probably be better, but this is fine. <laughs> so we'll add these two ships. This should sort things out. Now, another thing people have been mentioning is that they want me to equip items on the ships. And people had said that you should go to Old Nate and transmute some items. So he produces the kind of jet propeller hurricane. Movement speed 25%, cargo slowdown negative 100. Uh, and it takes 15 special scrap steam motors and then, uh, what is it, uh, steel. Just kind of refined steel. So we have a ship up here. We should have everything we need. If we go to construction material, so we'll take five of them. For every five of them, we need twice the amount of steel. And then we need a kind of a 15. So... What would that be? That would be one, two, three, four, five. I think. But then it would be... Yeah, so groups of five then. Uh, 25, right? Yeah, so... That should be everything we need to get a, a bunch of those made. Sorry. Have the... Uh, oh, nice! All positive. Love to see it. Uh, I've actually turned down the voice. I didn't want the uh, announcers interrupting me while I was talking. There we go. All right, so let's head back down. God, very atmospheric with the uh, rain and the uh, lighthouse. So we'll head back down with the Viper ship and uh, start transmuting some of those things, and then we'll equip them when the ships get to Cape uh, Crown Farms. So that's the plan there. The other plan is back on swords at the Research Institute. We can actually check what we've been making. Hey, we have our Dean of Deansville. That's what I was going to look for. Now, the Dean of Deansville or whatever, we'll have a look at him now in a second. I was going to equip him in the Scholar District here. So we have our little, uh, what do we call it, frat house, if you will. I guess there's men and women here, so it would be like um, sorority also. We have our lineman, who gives us 15% max residence, and then our wise and basin homesteader. She affects, she gives us a little bit of attractiveness, and then bonus happiness three. So Dean, the Dean of Deansville would remove that attractiveness, but give us 20% max residence. So it's really tempting to throw him in there to get all that extra research points and stuff. But at the same time, I don't like losing attractiveness. We're over the, the amount we need, actually, right now, just to get... It's because there's a festival, right, I think? Yeah, there's a festival. We can see it there, actually. Oh, it's right here. I'm, I'm so blind sometimes. So 250. So we're going to lose a bunch. I'll just take her out and see what it goes down to. So we're on 11212. So she provides 190-ish? Something like that, I think. It's kind of a lot, but we'll stick him in. So let's see what the houses are on now. 138. And now they're going to go up to 162. God damn. Now, is that going to affect things? Do they consume more when there's more people? I think they do. Let's go all islands and check something like telephones, just as an example. Yeah, so we're consuming more. I don't know if that's because of him, though. Let's just check. I'll take him out of there and check again. Right, yeah, so it does affect things. It's kind of interesting. Okay, well, we'll stick him in anyway. Boom. Max residence, 20%. They're going to start growing now. And let's just check what is what uh, what else he does. So, uh, residents provide bonus research points. Residents gain bonus happiness from the university. And at bonus residence, 24. Residents gain bonus residence from having that university. So it says that at the beginning as well. So 84,000 is what we're up to. If we get 200 more scholars, we go up another 1,000 for the limit. But we want to get that limit up to 90, if we can. I mean, I don't really mind if we do or not. I've already kind of achieved the goal, which I wanted to. But it would be nice, I suppose. We could move an extra oil deposit, etc. Now, I'm making another, or I'm sourcing an ability for Dean to go into another town hall at the same time, let's say. This is the research oh my god, I think we've got him already, have we? Oh, we have. I've already got two. So, over here, we've got the amazing fashion designer. They gain bonus residence from having tailored suits and leather boots. Yeah, so I'm going to swap him out. To pop Dean in there again. 
156 to 162. So a smaller increase on this side, but an increase nonetheless. Sorry, I keep forgetting it's nighttime. I People often ask me, why do you change the time and stuff? It's like, I actually like it at nighttime, but people complain they can't see anything. <laughs> so if it was me, I would just play through the night. I don't I don't mind it too much. In fact, sometimes nighttime just makes it easier to see certain things like um, distance on roads, etc. Um, so that's going to increase the, the need for telephones quite a bit. Now I noticed just when we were searching icons on the left here, it says we have Ferris over here. So maybe we'll just lo load up with... Ferris Al Sorami, and we'll send him down to the telephone production area because I believe there's actually a slot available in the town uh, trade union there. Ship of the line reporting in. That will make it so that we can increase that productivity without much of a drawback, I hope. Am I blind? Did I go past them? Oh, I'm looking at town halls, that's why. There he is. Take you as well. There's no need. We don't have any production buildings here. So there's actually no need to ever have anything trade union on that island. So we'll just sail down to um, Lusk. Drop him off and see what we can do. Right. So we've got three telephone factories at 265%. And I noticed that we have the iron and glass grill work. Which reduces the chance of fire. Which... I'm not downplaying, but it's not that important, and um, certainly don't need attractiveness, so we can get rid of that. But, the only way we can make room for it, I think... Yeah, is gonna be to move the marquetry workshops out. Now, I don't think they're being affected too much. And we've got space here. So that's what I'll do, I'm gonna make room for them on this side. Do they fit in there? They do indeed. So what were they at? 260 foot. Uh, and this is the thing here. So that's covering that one. So let's just uh, cut this road. Let's chop away here. And see how far this can go out and still be active. So just there. I think this will actually increase their productivity. Yeah, look at it go. 200 and... Oh, oh going over 300. Just to make things look nicer, I guess I'll put the road that way, along the edge. What is this? Reinforced concrete, okay. Right, so it's gonna put a bit more strain on wood, but I think we bring it in through Docklands, if I'm not mistaken. And now they go out that way. Yeah, maybe we can um, create an opening here. Right, so they should, um... Let's just open the backs of them as well, just in case they want to go out that way. So they could come out... I might change this as well. They could come out this way, go out there, and just head over to the uh, telephone areas. So they've got two roads across, basically, that leads over there. Which is uh, pretty good. Alright. So, with Ferris here in a moment, hopefully that extra productivity... Should give us what we need to boost the telephones. Alright, up, 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 up and away. There we go. Now they've run out of wood veneers, but you remember we just increased that as well. <clears throat> so let's check the production of wood veneers as an intermediate, I think. Yes, we are overproducing them now, so that's good. So we should eventually start storing them up. And then if we go to all islands, consumer goods, and go to telephones, we have now increased it above what we need. Excellent. I can't believe I solved it that easily. All right, and we've got space here for more stuff. It's so interesting, like how you can just optimize factories this way sometimes. Um, now, what else could we do? Or what else do we need, rather? Yeah, so filaments is the last thing to check. Now, I think we bring that in through Docklands. 17 is the demand. It's always been 360. Now, interestingly, I've actually reduced the amount of gold that we need and I was saying that I might actually deliver glass over here so that we don't ever have to have or we can ease up on gold quite a lot which might be the case um, I'll leave it at 360 it's been stable and 
if we check how much we have in storage, that'll give an indication how stable it is, if you know what I mean, like, is it gaining by a lot, or is it, it should be full up if it's gaining at all, really. 2635, hmm, might be a little tight, but we'll leave it and just monitor it, I guess, over time. I can't be bothered opening calculator and working everything out. Alright. Solved. So I'll probably as, as well do a redesign of this place. I mean, it won't change things too much. Like, I like the layouts of things, but I just mean like we'll put in some ornaments, maybe close the walls a bit tighter to the actual factories, you know, and just like tighten it up. But it's not it's not Lusk's day yet because there's still things to be built here. Um, all right, so that was pretty good. That actually went very well. So we'll head over to Cape Trelawney. Transmute jet engines, essentially. For the ships. Alright, there's our first one. Second one. I wish there was a noise with this. It's very underwhelming. I mean, I like the system and everything. It's a very pedantic thing to bring up, but it's like, ah, uh, one noise would be quite nice. I always imagine it like you hear like kind of a metal hammer banging like dun 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 and then some sort of like electricity zapping maybe if you got like I mean if you really wanted to go the whole way you could be like if it's a legendary it would have a, a slightly bigger and, and more extravagant noise than if it's an epic and if it's a rare sees feel that progression all right we just made five of them pretty easy uh, so we'll sail back up monitor where the souvenir ships are so this ship should be coming in oh there's one right here right now are you as well thinking of the song? Right here. Right now. Alright, our ship is on the way. We'll just, uh, as that comes in, we'll just transfer over that um, thing. The other thing I've been meaning to do, actually, is send this ship back to someone like Archibald to pick up the propeller. So I, I don't know if it's the best combination, but combining the propeller with the um, jet engine propeller thing would be pretty good. So we'll just send the HMS Terror back. Alright, so there you go. Boom. Nope. Too far away. Bring Careful. <laughs> Alright, so that's going to remove the slowdown 100%. Effectively... Well, I was going to say doubling its speed, but I guess not. I don't know how much it's slowed down by, but when it's full to the brim, 300 tons, it seems pretty good to be able to do that. Um, so just completely removing that thing. I guess what, we, what I could do is actually just move it... No, I can't actually, really. I was going to say, you could just monitor the speed of one that comes in, right? So we're at 15.6 knots now. And that's your standard movement, plus 25%, I guess, right? So we get 25% movement speed and then just removes the cargo uh, debuff. So I'd need to find a ship coming in that's full. I'll just speed this one up. This will probably fill up, and this will give you an indication. Yeah, so base speed, 13. With the propeller, 15.7 or something like that, right? Now with with 300, I want to see what it, what happens to it. So when it fills up completely, 10.9 knots. So we're basically gaining about five knot speed, which is like a 50% buff on its debuff, or a 30% 33% buff uh, on its base speed. So that's not bad. Uh, so, so what's that ship there? So there, actually, yeah. So you just come over here. You come over here. I know it's a bit of manual treasury, but um, we'll just transfer those things over pretty quickly. Alright, off you go. I've got two more to give away, and then we might just do this again, pick them up one more time. We can make quite a lot, actually, uh, before we run out of special scrap. How much scrap do we have? 217, it's 15 for each one, so quite a lot. Uh, about 10 or so, is it, or something like that? Or more? Yeah, even more. Um, I want to just keep an eye on where the next souvenir ship is. So it's on its way back still right now, so it'll take a while. Right, so I'm just going to take a moment to look at what else I wrote down in my notepad to do. Um, add police to the farms area. Oh yeah, I guess they don't really... They might not need this, but just in case. Um, so the new farm... Lakeside Village we built doesn't actually have a police station. 
Um, it doesn't have a hospital either. And sometimes these places can out have just that have those outbreaks. I don't really know why. I guess maybe living near the pigs or something? I don't know. Uh, I'm not really too sure where a hospital could go. But maybe here? I reckon it would almost cover everything. Oh, that's a shame. It's just missing this little pocket here. So look in the top right. It's just missing a, a, missing a pocket of three houses for range. I wonder does that include the buff you get from the local department we have extending services. Let's just put it down and see. Oh no, because that has to be within a trade union, doesn't it? That's the rule. So this reaches a trade union. Or sorry, a town hall. And the town hall then, if it has it in its range, gives it the benefit. I think that's what it is. No, maybe not. Maybe it just needs to be in range of the thing. Affects all public buildings in range of the department itself. Right, okay. Uh, what was that notification I just got? Ruins. Uh-oh. All our gas mines have exploded. Alrighty. I love the look of this, by the way, even though it's just a field. So is that a good spot to have it, or should I stick it in there? Would that would that help reach the whole way? It actually wouldn't. It would have to go down the center somewhere. I'm not doing that. I th I'd say just leave it. Leave it then. <laughs> I'll just give it that paved road. Yeah, maybe I'll make a little garden or something next to it. It feels like a weird building to have amongst the villagers, but they, they do get outbreaks of sickness if you don't have it. And the same will then be true for the uh, police station. Like, every now and then you'll have like a little riot. Even if everyone's happy, it just seems to happen. Bit of a shame, though. I mean, actually, the hospital looks pretty good there. I just think it needs something behind it to make it look more uh, proper, I guess. Although being right across from pig farm doesn't really make sense. Maybe maybe there is better. And that covers even less if it's there. I've got an idea. And we can cover this with trees or something. So that way it's like, yeah, the hospital's here, but you know. They kind of shelter themselves from the view of the uh, slaughterhouses or the pig farms. Um, what else could we have here? Maybe just bushes, flower beds. Yeah, that's good. And, and some shrubbery. I don't take enough risks. All right, just a little bit of shielding from, from the place itself. I think it makes it look just slightly nicer. Um, to be honest, that fence is actually a pretty good one too. What am I looking for? Road. And we'll just pave it all here. It's gross. You can just hear them going like hawking up loogies <laughs> and gross things like that. Yeah, that's actually okay. All right. Let's keep an eye on that souvenir route. Where are you at now? So you're on your way back. Not quite made it yet. This is the one, the Castilla. I don't actually see it. Hey, wow, we're up over 93,000. I gained 10,000 more? I guess the increments are pretty small. Scholar population is like the next one's at 9,700. Wow. God damn. Not bad. I didn't actually check the other uh, consumption rates. I'll have to do that uh, to see are these guys going to be okay for everything else. So, consumption rates on swords. Uh, let's just go all islands, I guess. Cause scholars are pretty... They're only here. Um, so, what do they need? I always forget what they need and what they want. So, they need university. Canned goods. Tailored suits, telephones, and seafood stew. So, canned goods will be the first thing I just check on. Canned goods... I'm sure it'll be fine. I think we bring it in through Docklands. Doesn't seem good there, but I think it'll be fine. Um, next one down was... 
Seafood Stew and Tailored Suits. Tailored Suits still hanging on there, still okay. Seafood Stew doing great, although not operating for some reason, so something must be wrong with that. Or they're full? I doubt that. Securing their expertise. And Telephones is fine as well, so that's okay. Um, yeah, let's check out what's going on in Mbesa and see why, is, why are they not making Seafood Stew. If only Tariko hadn't misplaced my no life. spiced flour. Okay, let's find out why no spiced flour. Spiced flour is done over there. Lots of teff. Kind of low on spices. Could that be the reason? Shipments of spice. That's an agricultural product, I believe. Spice. Places. All right, let's just activate this one here. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. We're way lower than we should be. I don't know how I've let that happen. I might just make a note of that for the next episode because this would be a nice island to kind of overhaul. And that should be quite a fun one to do. So this is where we make all our spices, and I guess we're way woefully underproducing. Um, it could be the case that we add some bright harvest here, or we just add it naturally, if you will. Got room, uh, irrigated soil and room to do it for sure. So that could be a nice little challenge. Yeah, I'm just going to write that one down because otherwise I'll forget. It's a good one for the next episode. Damn, I think I've misplaced. Oh, no, I've got it. I couldn't find my pen. Spices on bird's eye. Bird's eye chili. All right, so that's good. Um, all right, so what else have I got written down here? I think that's going to be pretty much it, because what I was going to do then was tack on to the end of this episode an overhaul for this island here of Scaries. Um, one thing that I think that it needs is schnapps. They don't have schnapps. And to get schnapps, what I plan on doing is making it on this island here. So what we just need is potato because we don't have the fertility there. It's just making potatoes and distilleries here. And again, like I said, in a, in a few episodes, I'll just redevelop this and move it around. So I'm being very lazy, I must admit, but... We have the workforce, no problem, to, to produce a lot of schnapps. So that should sort that out. Let's see, we've got plenty now on this island. So it's really just for, I think I'll also Rush. So Rush and, what was it, Scaries for schnapps. So yeah, they've got enough now once they get up and running, so that's good. Um, but we'll need a ship to take them from here. So I've got a ship, this ship here, waiting to build up Niter, taking forever. And people didn't like it because I told it to wait. How do you sp what's it called? Oh, it's called salt pepper, isn't it? There we go. So if I turn off wait for goods, and then I just come back here and pick up schnapps. And then I deliver it to Scaries and then there. And then we just come back, yeah, and then we just discard, and discard, and that should be fine. That should do it. So, um, this is Malahide's production, really. Ships have to wait a long time. Nah, they don't. Don't worry about that. <laughs> now, no doubt I've already missed the ship dropping off its souvenirs. Oh, I haven't, actually. Just in time. Just in time. It's just turning the, the corner now, actually. It's good. I was gonna say, you could just pause the route and then it'll just end up where it needs to go. Alright, take the engine. Take the engine. Look at the speed difference when you give it to it. It's crazy. And uh, we'll just pick that stuff up one more time. So. The other thing I wanted to do was we sent the ship back to Swords, and they re what I wanted to do with this was bring it up to Archibald and buy some of those propellers. Now, they're kind of rare. So it might take a few rolls until you see it. So there's, lots of, so there's one of the, You could just get this standard one, which is better than nothing. And I guess I will get a few of them. But I want the variant ahead of that one, the Epic. Um, which is called the Jet Propelled... Oh no, the controllable pitch propeller, I think it's called. So yeah, I'll just send the ship up here, we'll grab that, and then keep keep buying them until our ship is full, basically. Um. To your stations. Right, so let's just do this one more time. It won't take too long. 
So we need 100, uh, 50, and I think for the construction of this, we needed 50 and 25. And that should give us eight more of those. So we're basically just outfitting all of our ships to be way, way faster now. Proper end game, I feel like. How's everything here? I guess we could also check... Oh, they don't have the proper amount of ghoulie lash, but I think they're okay. They're doing okay. How are souvenirs handling? This city is simply breathtakingly beautiful. I'll just um, activate this thing. This top bar thing is great to just check your... Uh... So we've got 53, 52 falling down, no doubt, rap rapidly. But if we check here... So, Fancy Things is on its way back to pick up more. If we check now this new quality of life feature, we have 59 in the Island of Lusk. So this session still has enough to keep them going. So that's totally fine. And a ship is about to pick them up right now. Lots of traffic down here. Love to see it. Chosen to go all the way around to that one though, didn't you? Okay. And how long are you waiting? Not that long, pretty quick. Picked up 50 and on the way back. Love to see it. So, what about up here now? Down to 33. I'm just going to speed up time. I want to see, does that ship get here? You know, before we run out. And if not, it might need yet another ship. Sorry, wrong one. But that's why these probably need the same thing. They need that thing that, like, reduces the slowdown of um, movement. So 59 is on the way up here. And this ship doesn't have anything on it, so it's kind of slow. So if we give it the propeller and we give it a jet engine thing, it should get up here before these run out in the future. So we're down to 6, 5, 4, etc. And I don't think they're... They take a really long time to build up and stay there, but this should fall down pretty fast, in contrast. So now it's starting to fall, rapidly falling down, because they're out of them. And just as it's about to finish falling down, this ship is going to drop nine off. The press here me and of now it's coming back up. And, and then we're dropping another 50 or so. There they are. Yeah, so we're right on the edge. So speeding up those ships will make that will make the difference. Because we do produce more than we consume. It's just about getting it here. Um, fast enough. Because they're... Because people often say that. They're like, oh, well, it'll all work itself out eventually. But it's like, there is... Time is passing while goods are traveling between islands. And while that time is passing, people are consuming things without getting them. So you, unless you've got a lot of ships to deliver everything... Like, if you're on 20 consumption and 20 production, and it's even, that's when you need to have your logistics super, like, on time. If you're producing way more, then it does work itself out eventually. That's the difference, I think. <laughs> Tell me why I'm wrong, I guess, but... Ah, oh, we lost the propeller. Oh, well. I should have thought about that happening. There's a lot of the blue variant. We need... Need some of the purple. Man, really? Not one? Oh, my God. Oh, we're getting a lot of these ones. Though. I mean, these are pretty good. It's 10% movement speed, negative 25% to cargo. Cargo one doesn't really matter because we'll hopefully be outfitting it with um, the jet engine thing. In fact, I don't need that. Get rid of that. I'm just going to wait until the ship is full and then we'll move on. Spending a lot of money doing this now. 145,000 every roll. I can imagine people's frustration be like, oh my god, so many good items are going by. Whatever. <laughs> it's fine. Damn, we didn't get one controllable pitch propeller, or if we did, I missed it. That's crazy. Oh well. So I'll, I'll in between episodes, I'll kind of start outfitting loads of the ships that come by here with all of these. And that should be okay. Oops, keep going to the wrong place. Alright. Don't know, should I call this episode Transmution? Because of how many items we're getting here. 
I'll have to as well get that diving bell going around soon as well to find a few more things because we're going to run out of scrap. All right. Four, five, five more. So what are the, uh, the jet? Yeah, I am. I was thinking I was saying it wrong, like jet engine, but it is. It says jet propeller hurricane. There you go. All right, I think that's going to be it from me. I'm going to be transitioning now into a, hopefully, a time lapse of the island of Scaries. Just a quick one. It's a small island, and we'll reorder it, make it look a little bit nicer. Um, and then, yeah, episodes will re... Hey! Missing electricity. Excuse me? Oh, I must have moved it somewhere where there is none. Okay, well, not that it matters. I'm probably going to destroy that, to be honest. Um, yep, yeah. anyway, that's gonna be it for this episode. Episodes are gonna resume on Wednesdays and Sundays. Wednesdays and Sundays, and if you're feeling up to it, check out my Frostpunk series, which will be starting on Tuesday, and then it'll be every Tuesday, Thursday going forward. Um, a lot of people, like, well, a few people, I should say, messaged me about watching the old series in preparation for it, so I really appreciate that, that's very kind of them, and they said it was awesome. I haven't had one bad word yet. Um, other, well, some people are like, oh, you're not very optimal in it. If you're expecting optimal gameplay, you're in the wrong place. I'm all about the immersion and making tough choices. Although, I dare say, I come out of that Frostpunk Let's Play on Hard in a pretty, like, in a pretty good way. I would challenge people to do it with as many people as I did and do as well. Uh, early as, as early on as I had. I think it's the second time I'd ever played it, you know, so I think I did pretty good. Anyway, enough, uh, boasting. Thank you all very much for watching. Thanks for those who listened to the story as well at the beginning, the story time. <laughs> and, uh, and I'll see you in the time lapse. All right, everybody, welcome to our first island overhaul. This is for the island of Scaries, the Fairport town of Scaries. And this place actually initially started off as a mining colony. We came here, we settled this island so that we could initially get the iron deposits. And then later on in our campaign, we came back for zinc and copper. And then to bolster our coal, we set up several charcoal kilns. A lot of this is probably now kind of redundant. And later on in Scary's history, uh, we came back and then changed a fertility so that we could set up our brand new vineyards. And it's now the leading producer of grapes for our champagne trade. So the first bit of the overhaul up on the top of the island there, I just kind of set up a little enclosed factory to deal with the, uh, the mining shaft that send their goods there. It's kind of a deposit box almost uh, for that stuff. And then as we sweep around the island, I've just got a bunch of evenly spaced now kind of charcoal kilns with a road that looks a little bit neater and just kind of like tidying up the roads there. Now to the docks. Docks are quite tricky. I think it's something I'm going to struggle with with each of these island overhauls just because of the uneven nature of coastlines and the fact that, you know, you're trying to balance getting a key road versus the regular road and then trying to match where you can put all your little, um, your key side, like the actual proper key and uh, clay and stuff, it's it's difficult because it's just so like gritty and grid-like and it's really hard to make it like even and look like a natural kind of key side. Especially with the kind of random deviation that it gets as you're kind of dragging it out, you'll get little staircases and things like that. I love the one that we have here, but that prevents me from putting down ornaments, otherwise it gets removed. So it's, you know, it's a balancing act to kind of make it look nice. So I've got two extra piers put down here. We didn't have them before and a new storage warehouse at the back there, which I think looks really nice for the extra island storage. Uh, I added a second fishery and I decided to space them apart. I wanted to kind of have a bridge in there somewhere with a little little harbor area. Now, doesn't make the most sense having the bridge there, to be quite honest. there You know, you can just walk on the key road right behind it, but it's somewhat nice to say it's sort of like a gated harbor in a way. Um, but maybe there's a reason that every now and then they'd have to like drag things over from the front. I don't know why, but... Let's just leave it, eh? Um, and then we've got some extra ornaments for barrels and stuff. I have that one of those little restaurants on the edges there for, you know, it's, it's far away from the town. You might want to get a little snack, a bite to eat uh, as you're working. Maybe some fish, fish and chips. Now, into the town itself, uh, just kind of reordering, reorganizing where the houses are going to go. We actually don't really need that many houses here because we've moved so far into the campaign and we have the island bonuses now to get 200 base workforce for everything. It kind of means that I don't really need any of these villages, uh, sorry, farmer households, uh, residences, I should say. Uh, so I removed some of them. I think in future, though, I might try to steer clear of doing that um, and instead try to make use of as much of the workforce as I can. So if I know I've got room for extra fisheries, I think I'll just put them down to sustain even if it's just farmer residents. Now, speaking of workforces, we, we don't even need the church. We don't actually have the population here for it anymore. Um, that was a, a long time ago when we did, but because of that bolstering 200 plus work, worker workforce, 
I was able to reduce the amount of houses, and we don't technically need the church anymore. But I think it looks really nice. It's a nice centerpiece to the uh, town and the island, so it looks good. Uh, the sheep farm then is kind of like embedded in the town in between two villagers' houses. The fire station is down by the docks, which kind of makes sense to me. I actually never really thought about it, but can they? Can you use seawater to put out fires? I don't see why not, but I've never really thought about it or heard it being done. I'm sure you can. Why not? Just because it's got salt. I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you know. Anyway, next to the fire station, I always like to use that um, water tower ornament. It's a great one from the worker, uh, the Bright Harvest Pack. Then in front of the church, I just thought I was going to leave it as like kind of a blank kind of open area, but I thought it looked a bit nicer with some seating and some tr trees and a little newspaper stand, a road irregularly cutting through it. Uh, moving the pig farm over now, trying to keep it next to the slaughterhouse. I always feel like that just kind of makes sense. Sad, sad for the pigs, I guess. But um, if you just push, yeah, so there we go. I was wondering if I did that or not. You push back the slaughterhouse and then it kind of actually works really well with the dirt road because you can see that the scrapes of mud that drag into the pig farm. Uh, it looks really good when you have a dirt road next to it like that, so I think it, I think it works out well. And then again with the um, cloth industry, just kind of embedding that further into the town as well, uh, next to one of the warehouses. So I've actually skipped ahead here a little bit. It's because I did this sort of apple orchard at the back of the pub. My initial thinking was hey, it's like cider or something, you know? It's like the fresh cider that comes from here. Uh, maybe that's where they get the apples from. But I decided to change it around and move the orchard up to the vineyard in just a moment so that's why I skipped ahead there so I'm just kind of neatening up the roads tidying up the roads a little bit now we're doing the vineyard so I keep saying vineyard now we're doing the orchard sorry the orchard apple orchard up here by the vineyards uh, so I just kind of copy and pasted the layout for that and then drag a wall around the whole thing now later I actually decided to change this just slightly and you'll see what I mean in a second I decided to put the fuel station in on the edge of it because it's actually perfectly spaced for a fuel station to fit in there. Um, and I just thought it would make a lot of sense doing that. So there's the fuel station there. I moved it closer during the time lapse, thinking like, oh yeah, that's pretty good. But later on, like I said, unfortunately not on camera, but you'll see it at the very end. I did um, squeeze that fuel station just a little bit in there. Now, I just covered the whole island with trees, which we'll get back to in a moment. Not actually a very good idea, and I'll talk about why in a moment. All right, so doing the oil docks now, we already have the storage set for it. I moved the island storage that was initially on the front of the island around to the back of here because it's a bit more industrial style. I always like having a little slipway, as we know they're called now. Um, so I always try to have a, like, a little slipway somewhere with some boats and things like that nearby to make it seem like, yeah, they just like push off into there and a crane maybe in case things get uh, beached or stuck. And then next to these little warehouses here, uh, or storage facilities, just some extra ornaments. What are those ornaments from, actually? The, uh... Oh, Docklands, that's what it is. The Docklands ornaments, of course. We have the extra lighthouse, the key is looking a bit more even and stuff. I think it looks really nice out there. And then just linking a road back up to it, giving it a little bit of paving, but not, not completely. People often ask, why don't you just pave the roads? Because it looks better. It looks better to have some dirt roads every now and then. Uh, now, this is where I painstakingly go through removing trees bit by bit. I could have just blank removed them and then placed them down again, but for whatever reason, I thought I would try this method of just, like, trying to remove all the trees next to, like, the coastlines or the edges of the cliffs, you know, where there's a little bit of wind erosion. Put down a little signpost there so people know where they're going. It's actually quite satisfying to watch, though, um, I think, removing the trees, but it was um, not very fun to do. <laughs> Uh, I actually ended up removing all the trees then around from the charcoal kilns to kind of get an idea of um, where to place trees back in and then they'll grow naturally, I guess. So, after this clip, uh, I'm going to basically just freeze frame, well not freeze frame, just kind of um, remove the UI and spend some time rotating around the bits that we've done. Um, and that's obviously going to be the end of the episode, so I just want to say again, thanks for everyone who's been watching the series so far. Uh, next episode, we're going to go to that bird's eye island, I think, and try to sort out spices and then maybe overhaul that island to make it look kind of nice, too. Be nice to have a change of scenery over in Mbesa as well. All right, thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.
Hey guys, thank you very much for watching, and remember, if you want to support this series directly, you can click the Join button to become a channel member. Doing so will get your name in the credits, as well as loyalty badges and emotes to use in the comments. If you don't see the Join button, it means the video has been copyright claimed, but you can still join from the channel page on desktop. You can also link your account to our Discord to get a special role on there that will give you access to the Senate House and a few other perks.